How's it going guys? Altus Tech here with part 2 of the SketchUp Basics tutorial series. In part 1 we went over some of the basic tools of the program as well as the layout and some basic cool stuff like the axes. Now if you missed part 1 go ahead and click the link in the description below or the annotation on your screen now uh, because everything that we went over in part 1 is going to be used and important in part 2. So yeah, go ahead and click that link if you haven't already. Okay, so in part one, we missed a few of these tools that we were going to go over. So we're going to go ahead and go over them now because they are all extremely simple. And then we're going to go ahead and make a house in SketchUp. A very simple house, mind you. We're not going to do anything crazy like a mansion. Um, but yeah, okay. So the first tool on our list here for part two would be the eraser tool. This pink eraser. I miss those from my school days and elementary. Go ahead and click that. And basically what the eraser tool does is what you think it's going to do. It's going to erase things. So say we want to erase this line here. We're just going to click and it's going to erase the line along with the box that it was holding up. Control Z. We're going to go ahead and create or erase this uh, top part of the tube here and it's going to erase the entire tube just as we expected. So basically what the eraser tool does is it's going to erase things whatever you want. So we're going to go ahead and uh, kill Aaron off there. And we'll revive him or her because, well, I don't know, I kind of like Aaron. Uh, and yeah, that's basically all I need to know about the eraser tool. It erases things. Very simple to know and learn. Next on our list would be the measuring tool. Now, this is extremely important if you want to get things proper and measured out. If you don't, well, it's going to turn out weird, so you, you should learn this. Uh, basically, it works like a measuring tool in real life. You just want to click on one end point the other and this is nine feet nine inches so let's say we want to measure uh, Aaron here we're just gonna go to the foot and Aaron is five six I thought she was five five she or he was five five I guess I'm an inch wrong uh, but yeah that's basically all you need to know about the measuring tool uh, you can change the measurement uh, to uh, meters or, or metric system Imperial uh, usually I'm on metric because that's the Canadian system but for some reason it's not imperial but that doesn't really matter uh, but yeah you can change it to whatever unit of measurement you wish uh, very easily and I will be going over that in another tutorial okay uh, next tool we're gonna go ahead and learn here would be the paint bucket tool now this is how you apply your textures go ahead and click that a menu will pop up with all the different preset textures SketchUp has to offer, which is actually a pretty good amount. Uh, so let's say we want some brick here. We're going to go ahead and go to brick and cladding. And this looks like a nice brick. Go ahead and click on whatever surface you want the brick applied to. And now one of our cylinders or tubes is a giant brick tube. Go ahead and click another kind of brick and we'll make that brick, put that brick onto our secondary tube. And as you can see, now we have a cool looking brick mess. I guess it looks a little bit better, but not very much. Uh, but yeah, that's basically all you need to know about the paint bucket tool. Um, now you can obviously import your own textures, which is really awesome. And I'm actually going to make an entire video dedicated to just that because it is kind of a long process. Um, but yeah, that, that that's pretty much all you need to know for the basics of the materials or paint bucket tool. Um, yeah, it's just for textures, which is awesome. Go ahead and that, okay, and again, I'm going to make a, a, a more in-depth tutorial on the paint bucket or materials tool. Don't worry about that, because uh, it is, you know, a, a pretty massive part of the entire program. Okay, now we just have a few more tools to go before we can start work on our simple house. First one would be the orbit tool, which I've been using this entire time. Basically, it just allows you to orbit your area. The next one would be the pan tool, which is just going to allow you to pan, pan around here with the crazy de decrepit hand icon which kind of freaks me out. We have the magnifying glass or the zoom in tool which just allows you to zoom in by dragging back and forth your mouse but I don't really see why well, that's useful because you can just use the uh, middle click in your mouse. I suppose if you're using a laptop uh, and you don't have a mouse handy you can use that so it's really useful for that I suppose. And then we have the uh, tool here uh, which is just the other zoom which I really don't find any use for so you don't really need to know very much about that last tool there because it really isn't all that important especially if you're not using a laptop because you can just use the uh, middle mouse button to click and drag back and forth 
Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all it is for the basic tools. Uh, I hope that demonstrated just how simple SketchUp really is and just how awesome it really is. Um, and yeah, now we're going to go ahead and start work on our very basic house with all of the knowledge we have learned so far in this series. So first we're going to go ahead and erase our horrible mess that we have designed here. So I'm just going to select it all and press delete. Click all this stuff here too. And just delete it. And delete it. Okay, so Erin needs a house because he or she lives in a horrible tundra. It's really depressing, so we want to improve his or her quality of life because it really must be depressing living, living in this horrible place. So, first off, we're going to go ahead and lay a base using the rectangle tool. Just a vertical base. This is going to be our floor. That simple. Next, we're going to go ahead and erect some walls. So, Aaron is 5'6", so let's make the walls 7 feet tall. So, we're just going to measure. Using our measuring tool, it's blue, so it's vertical. And we're just going to make that 7 feet. Just like that. Uh... 7-3 should be fine. Okay, so the walls are now 7-3. And we're going to go ahead and lay down our walls here using the rectangle tool again. And this is all vertical. We know that because we're using Aaron as a reference. Uh, usually I'd use the measuring tool, but Aaron is a good reference. And now we have our walls down here. Uh, you guys should have catched up by, caught up by now if you are following me right here. Okay, now we need a roof. So we're going to go ahead and use the measuring tool here. And we're just going to go along here, and when you see the blue, light blue dot, and it's also going to say midpoint, that means that you're in the center of your line or whatever object that you're hovering over. So we're going to go ahead and click that, and we're going to go up about uh, four, or, yeah, about four feet, and then we're going to go ahead and create a line here in the center. We're going to go up, and then we're just going to create two lines here creating our basis for the roof. We're going to go ahead and delete the middle line here, so we're just going to click it and press delete. And then we're going to use the, our push-pull tool and we're going to extrude the roof all along here. Just making sure that it's all fitting properly, so we're just going to check. It's a little bit too much, so we're just going to push it back a bit. Perfect. And now we have our roof. Okay, so Aaron is looking very happy with his or her new house. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add a door now. So this is the front of the house, so we're going to go ahead and add one in the center. We have the midpoint here. We're going to go up. Actually, we're going to measure first, so I'll make it about six feet. Perfect. And then we're going to go ahead and use the line tool, making a midpoint. We're going to go ahead and measure again, just so it's even on both ends. So we're going to make both of the both ends two feet horizontally okay, a little bit fiddly here okay perfect and then we're just gonna go ahead and lay down the door just like so deleting the middle line now which we used as a reference and now we'll go ahead and add the door frame we're not gonna measure for this because it really doesn't matter air doesn't have any neighbors so our house can his or house can be as ugly as we choose so now we have the very basic door and we're gonna add two windows here we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to put down one window right here, add a window frame, and now we're going to go ahead and learn another trick here. We're going to select the entire window, and then we're going to go ahead and use the move tool. We're going to hold control, and that's going to create a duplicate of the thing that we just copied or had selected. And as you can see, the red line across means that it is perfectly vertical. It's not going to be off at all. We're just going to drop it right there. Whoops. We're just going to recreate this wall here. And there we have it. We have two windows, a door, and a roof. Perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, put some material on this thing. So we're going to choose a nice brick. This looks fine. And we'll just start applying it to all the walls. Just like so. And then we're going to go ahead and apply a roof texture because we need a roof. So go to roofing, and we're going to create a nice roof for Aaron here. Perfect. And then up here, we're just going to, I guess, pick another kind of brick, just to make it all nice and fancy. And we'll put it on this.
this side as well. Less and put some material on the windows and the door. So we're going to go ahead and go to translucent, which is glass. We're going to pick a nice glass texture here. We're going to put that right there. And then we'll pick a nice wood texture for the window frames. So we'll go over to wood. And uh, this one looks fine. Go ahead and apply that to our window frames and our door frame as well. We'll extrude those a little bit just to make things a little bit thick. Just like so. And also this as well. And then we're just going to go ahead and put another wood onto our door here. Just like that. And just that simply we have a very basic little house for Aaron. Aaron's life is now improved by one million percent and he or she can now live inside during the long winter months that are havocly destroying this tundra of a world that he or she lives in. Uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps up part two. Hope you guys learned something here and make sure to go on to part three, which we're gonna go ahead and uh, start going to the more complex tools and functions in SketchUp. Thank you for watching as always and stay tuned for more.